8. Marblehead of Hercules In June of 2022, marine archaeologists announced the recovery of a marble sculpture depicting the head of Hercules from a Roman-era cargo ship that wrecked off the Greek island of Antikythera around 2,100 years ago. The Aegean wreck was initially discovered 120 years ago, and several pieces of Hercules' body were lifted from the water. However, his head remained missing until recently. Archaeologist Lorenz Baumer, who oversaw the project, told The Guardian that the newly discovered sculpture is twice life-size, has a big beard, a very particular face, and short hair. He said that there is no doubt that it's Hercules. In addition to the Herculean head, the team found a piece of another marble statue, some human teeth, and some of the ship's equipment. To get to the objects, they had to move three massive nine-ton boulders that sat on top of the wreck. It was no easy feat according to Baumer, who explained that the divers can only visit the site for a half hour at a time. Luckily, the initial discoveries gave the team an idea of what else they can expect to find as they continue to explore the wreck. In Baumer's words, it's giving them a better understanding of the ship, its cargo, the crew, and where they were from. Researchers plan to perform genetic and isotope analyses of the team in hopes of learning even more about the crew who sailed the ill-fated ship. 7. The Batavia Built during the 17th century, the Batavia was a flagship of the Dutch East India Company, a multinational corporation that once dominated world trade. The 150-foot-long ship ran aground roughly 40 miles off Australia's western coast during its maiden voyage to Southeast Asia in 1629. The Batavia's commander, Francisco Pelsart, went off in search of food and water, leaving 289 survivors behind on Beacon Island. During his three-month absence, a merchant named Geronimus Cornelitz took control of the survivor colony. Cornelitz ordered dozens of murders, sparing no mercy for women and children. His reign of terror ended when Pelsart returned and executed him, along with several other mutineers. The remaining survivors were rescued from the hell-like existence that endured for far too long. Researchers discovered the Batavia wreck during the 1960s, and over the following decade, they raised and preserved the surviving part of the ship's stern. To this day, it's the only part of an early 17th century Dutch East India Company vessel that's ever been removed from the water. Records detailing the source of the ship's timber are scarce, but a 2021 study of the Woods tree rings revealed that the timber was felled around 1625 in northern Germany and the Baltic region. The wood was processed shortly thereafter, and it was still green when it was cut and used to build the Batavia. Researchers also found that the shipbuilders discarded the timber's soft outer rings or sapwood, which is vulnerable to decay and shipworm infestation. This proves that the Batavia's builders were skilled and experienced craftsmen who were familiar with the materials that they used. In addition to studying the ship, experts were investigating human remains that were buried on Beacon Island. Surprisingly, they found several mass graves containing at least 115 bodies. Some skeletons bore no signs of meeting a violent end, indicating that the deceased perished from dehydration, and researchers believe that some of them may have gone crazy before they died. Other remains show signs of having suffered through horrific violence, most likely at the hands of Cornelitz and his fellow mutineers. The unspeakable tragedies that occurred here make for a particularly bizarre tale even to the experts who've long studied the signs of carnage that were left behind. 6. G5 Torpedo Boat Between 1933 and 1941, the Soviet military built around 300 G5 torpedo boats. These relatively small and fast vessels were designed to carry torpedoes into battle. Described by former Forbes journalist H.I. Sutton as having sweeping lines, a curved hull and a submarine-like bridge, the G5 almost looks more like a sports car than a seafaring vehicle. And like other torpedo boats, its importance in past conflicts has been largely overlooked in favor of larger warships. Each G5 boat consisted of a V12 engine, a cockpit that was barely big enough for the pilot to stand up in, and two torpedoes, which were made from an incredibly light type of aluminium called Jura Lumen, which is typically used in the aerospace industry. The pilot launched the torpedoes by dropping them off the back of the vehicle, and they had a top speed of around 60 miles per hour. 
In 2020, the Russian Navy announced that it had raced a G5 torpedo boat in Karantina Bay off Sevastopol along the Crimean Peninsula. The vessel had sat on the seafloor, completely submerged for 78 years after defending the port city against the Nazis during the siege of Sevastopol in 1941 and 1942. It was remarkably intact, and it was in excellent condition, especially for the length of time it had spent underwater. After World War II, the Soviet Union transferred several G5s to North Korea, which attempted to use them against American ships during the Korean War. North Korea praised the vessel, even falsely claiming that it sank the US Navy cruiser USS Baltimore in 1950. The alleged responsible G5 is on display at the Victorious War Museum in Pyongyang, where the untrue story is just one of many fictitious stories that visitors can expect to encounter. Today, very few modern navies continue to operate torpedo boats, which have fallen out of favor to larger vessels. 5. Roman Coin Hoard Louis Lenz Pardo and his brother-in-law Cesar Gimeno Alcala were snorkeling during a family trip to the Spanish coastal town of Zabia in 2021 when they noticed something glimmering on the floor of the Mediterranean Sea. Their original plan was to clean up trash, but they soon found themselves embarking on an unplanned treasure hunt. Pardo went to investigate the shiny object and found that it was a very old coin featuring an ancient Greek or Roman-like face. He recovered it from a small hole and suspected that there were more coins waiting to be found. The pair later returned to the site with a Swiss army knife and recovered seven more pieces. They reported the discovery, and a team of archaeologists found 53 gold coins dating between 364 and 408 AD when the Western Roman Empire was in decline. They're extremely well preserved, with all but one coin bearing identifiable portraits of the Roman emperors Valentinian I, Valentinian II, Theodosius I, Arcadius, and Honorius. The collection constitutes one of the largest Roman coin hoards ever found in Europe. It's especially valuable because it could shed light on exactly what happened during the empire's final days. Someone may have buried the treasure in a rush to hide it from intruders, according to researcher Jamie Molina Vidal, who spoke with live science about the discovery. No nearby shipwrecks have been found, further pointing toward the likelihood that someone went out of their way to conceal the hoard of coins. Would you rather find a stash of ancient gold coins or the tomb of an Egyptian mummy? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, hit that subscribe button. Four. Nuestra Señora de las Mercedes In 1804, a treasure-laden ship called the Nuestra Señora de las Mercedes sank during a battle off Portugal's Cape St. Mary. Researchers believe the vessel capsized before Spain joined France in the Napoleonic Wars against Britain, which started after the breakdown of the 1802 Treaty of Amiens between France and Britain. A US-based salvage company by the name of Odyssey Marine Expedition discovered the wreck in 2007 and raised 594,000 gold and silver coins, totaling a value of roughly $394 million. The treasure was sent directly to Tampa, Florida. Odyssey Marine Exploration remained secretive about the wreck and refused to disclose its whereabouts. In the meantime, the Spanish government claimed ownership of the sunken vessel and fought the case. It turned out that some of the coins were minted in Lima, so the Peruvian government also claimed dibs on the treasure. In the end, the court ultimately ruled that the hoard rightfully belonged to Spain. Odyssey was ordered to turn it over to the Spanish government and to pay over $1 million for so-called bad faith and abusive litigation. In 2014, Spain's culture ministry began sponsoring dives to the site. Led by Cartagena's National Museum of Underwater Archaeology, Aqua, the first of the three planned expeditions yielded thousands of artifacts, including anchors, iron and bronze cannon, copper and tin ingots, a silver dinner service and cutlery, silver candlesticks, a gold pestle, and others, according to a report from the University of Warsaw. The treasures offer a rare first-hand glimpse of what 19th century life was like, making their monetary value secondary to their historic and scientific value. 3. Nanhai Wan The wooden merchant ship Nanhai Wan sank off of southern China's Guangdong province sometime during the 12th or 13th century, with somewhere between 60,000 and 80,000 items on board. 
It quickly became buried by a thick layer of silt, which kept it remarkably preserved for centuries to come. A joint British and Chinese expedition discovered the ancient wreck in 1987 while searching for a different vessel. Measuring 100 feet long and 32 feet wide, the Nanhai Wan is the largest ship of its kind ever found. It was also the first vessel discovered along a vital ancient trade route known as the Marine Silk Road, which connected China to India, Africa, and the Middle East. Experts are unsure of the exact route the ship was trying to take when it sank into the South China Sea. However, they believe that it departed from southern China to trade with other countries along the Marine Silk Road when it capsized during a brutal storm. In 2007, a salvage team put the Nanhai Wan into a giant metal box and raised it from the seabed. It remained inside the box, protected by silt and seawater, until excavations began. Archaeologists found a trove of artifacts inside the ship, including porcelain, lacquerware, coins, and gold objects dating back to the Imperial Song Dynasty, which ruled China until 1279. According to one expert, the hall included enough items to fill a museum. 2. Vasa When the Vasa set sail from Stockholm Harbor on August 10, 1628, it was the world's most technologically advanced warship. Commissioned by Swedish King Gustav II Adolf, the beautifully decorated wooden vessel was covered in ornate wooden carvings and boasted 64 bronze cannons. However, the Vasa's glory was shockingly short-lived. She was just 390 feet from land and minutes into her maiden voyage to the Swedish island of Alsnaben when she sank to her watery grave. Hundreds of horrified spectators watched from the shore as a combination of engineering failures and heavy winds quickly brought the ship down, claiming a total of 30 lives. A crew tried to raise the wreck shortly after the sinking, but the vessel had come to rest in the mud and became even more stuck during the salvage attempt. Finally, in 1961, the Swedish government raised the ship and the thousands of artifacts within it. Thanks to the Baltic Sea's cold, oxygen-poor water, which prevents shipworms and bacteria from thriving, the wreck was in remarkable shape. At the time of the recovery, around 95% of Vasa's wood remained intact. It's the only preserved 17th century vessel in the world, according to the Vasa Museum in Stockholm, where the ship's on public display. There are several theories that try to explain what exactly caused the Vasa to sink. Eager to see his vision come to life, King Gustav II had rushed the building process. It's unclear whether he knew that the vessel was designed by someone who had no experience with armed ships. Consequently, its gun deck was far too heavy, and it had very little resistance to changes in the wind or waves. Although the Vasa never accomplished anything noteworthy in its very short time on the water, it lives on in collective memory as an iconic symbol of Swedish heritage. 1. The Maud in 1918, the legendary Norwegian explorer Roald Amundsen tried to cross the North Pole on a ship called the Mort by taking a route between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans known as the Northeast Passage. After spending several grueling winters at sea without achieving his vision, he instead set his sights on reaching the North Pole by air. Amundsen eventually went bankrupt, and the Mort met an equally unglamorous fate when it was sold to the Hudson's Bay Company and used as a floating warehouse. In 1930, it sank off the coast of Nunavut, Canada, in Cambridge Bay, and remained there for the next 80 years until a crew began working to raise it. The wreck was finally lifted from the icy water in 2016, as part of a project called Maud Returns Home, after six failed seasons of trying to retrieve it. It was placed on a barge and was transported to its home country the following year, spending the winter in Greenland along the way. Finally, in 2018, the Maud arrived in Norway, nearly a century after departing the country for Amundsen's ill-fated voyage. According to the latest update, there are plans to build a new museum building to house the Maud, which currently sits in the waters off the village of Tofta, with a protective roof shielding her from the elements. Have you ever found anything interesting along the seafloor? Let us know in the comments below and remember to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye!